Hey everyone, in this video, I want to share with you a story of a recent challenge that I came across where I used Excel and Power Query to help solve it. This is a great example of using Power Query to help simplify your business data and make it more manageable to work with. And with that said, let's get into it. A friend of mine reached out with an interesting problem. They had an Excel file containing a single column of business expenses. Each transaction had the date and description all contained in one cell, with the corresponding expense amount in the cell right below it. As you can imagine, this made it pretty difficult to analyze and understand the data at a glance. Like let's say that we wanted to see the total expenses for the month of January. We can try to filter this column and search for let's say 2024-01 and then pressing OK. We can see that the transaction date and description are shown, but the expense amounts are missing, meaning there's nothing to add. This would be incredibly frustrating, right? And this is a basic insight that any business owner would need to be able to see. So they asked me if there was a way to have the expense amount be in line with that transaction description and date. So the end result looks something like this. After thinking about this for a bit, I came to the conclusion that Power Query would be the perfect tool for this job. So let's start by bringing this data into Power Query. So I have a cell selected in my data set. Then I'm gonna go up to the data tab and then click from table slash range. This will bring up a dialog box that's gonna convert our data into a table. So I'm just gonna click okay. And this will bring up the Power Query Editor. There are two goals that we want to achieve. The first one is aligning the expense amount to be in line with the date and description. For example, looking at the first row, we need to figure out a way to move this 150 up and to the right. To do this, we're gonna be using the Merge Queries command. And what query will we be merging? We'll be merging it with itself. So let's begin by adding an index column by going up to the Add Column tab, and we're gonna add an index column that starts from one. Then we'll do it again, except we're gonna select a different starting point, which is from zero. So now we can see a bit of a pattern appearing here, where there's a one here, and there's a one there. Next, we're gonna to go to the Home tab, and then select Merge Queries. And this will bring up a menu for us, where this portion is the data that we're working with right now, so we can leave it as is. And this portion down here is the data that we want to merge in. And since we're merging the query with itself, let's select it from the drop down here. So now that we have both queries selected, we can now pick what columns we want to merge together. So up here, I'm gonna pick the first index column, and then down here, I'll pick the second index column. I'll keep the join kind as left outer, and then click OK. This will add a column where each row contains a table. So looking at the first one, for example, we can see the business expense 150 shown to us, which is now in line with our date and description. So all that's left to do now is to click this icon here to expand this table to be in columns, but I only want the business expense. I'll keep this use original column name as prefix selected and then click OK. And now we can start to see things coming together. The first row now contains the date and description still within one cell, but at least the expense amount is now in the same row. However, some other things have happened here too. We have these rows that don't make much sense and we really don't need them anymore. So we can get rid of them by adjusting the data type of this new column to be decimal numbers, which will create a bunch of errors. And that's okay because we can remove them using this remove errors command. And while we're at it, we can also remove these index columns as well. So I'm gonna select one, hold control and select the other one, right click, remove columns. And then finally, looking at the data within this new column, we see some null values. So I'm just gonna uncheck them and filter them out then click OK. And now we've achieved our first goal, which was to align the expense amount to be in line with the date and description. Now let's tackle the second goal, which was to split the date and descriptions into their own columns. Luckily for us, there's a command that does just that. So what I'm gonna do is select the column like this, and then go up to split column, and we'll select by delimiter. So the delimiter in this case is going to be a semicolon, and then I'll click OK. So the last thing I'm gonna do here is rename these column headers to be more sensible. So for this one, I'm gonna double click and type in the word date. And in this one, I'm gonna type in the word description. And this last column, we're gonna put expense. And now finally, we can go ahead and load this data into the worksheet by going to this close and load button here, clicking close and load to. 
So we want to view this data as a table still, and we're going to put this data on an existing worksheet. We're actually going to put it right beside our original data set. And there we have it. We now have a clean and organized table where each transaction description is right beside its corresponding amount. This makes it so much easier to analyze and understand the data. So going back to the first question at the beginning of this video, we can now filter this date column and select January. And if I highlight this column, we can see that the expense amount for the month of January was $2,610. But now that we've set this up in Power Query, it can now be reused and recycled when more data comes in. So with this data set, we only had data up until March. Let's go ahead and add some more data up until July and see what the data looks like. So here we can see I've added some more data to our original data set up until the month of July. So let's scroll back up to our new table and I'm just gonna go to the end of it and then right click our table and then click on refresh. And now we can see the data automatically includes our new months. And that was a powerful example of how you can use Power Query to help simplify your data and make it more manageable to work with. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you all in the next video.